What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Stallion here and as highly requested, I'm sharing my recommended settings for streamers who are looking to get good quality from their streams. In today's video, we're going to be discussing OBS Studio, which is the streaming software that I use particularly. Now, this video does assume that you have some general sense of OBS Studio and computer pieces in general and understand how changing these settings and pieces can also affect your performance and how your stream will look. Okay, so I'm no crazy tech whiz. This isn't a, you know, brand new guide of how to use OBS or anything like that. This is me sharing my settings and my best practices from full-time streaming for over three years now and the settings that I've found being most stable for me okay with that being said we're going to start with five quick fire tips for anybody who's watching this video to know a little bit more about streaming and obs and things that you guys should know about straight away okay so point number one make sure to have a look if your game that you play is cpu or gpu intense because that can cause performance issues and delays for example the latest call of duty from modern warfare 2019 and onwards you know uh cod games are now known to be uh very cpu intense so this might actually sway you to encode off of your graphics card to share the performance on your PC. Point number two, regardless of how good your computer specs are, upload speed is everything when it comes to broadcasting. You can frequently check your speeds on ookla.com which connects you to the nearest server and checks your download and upload speed for you. Point number three, a solid and consistent upload speed for streaming makes all the difference as well. A good standard for resolution for a stream is usually around 720p, which requires around 8 to 10 upload speed as standard. Anything lower than that in regards to your upload speed, you might need to reconsider streaming in 480p. I think you can do also like 540 or 640, I'm not sure, um, especially if your internet fluctuates, all right? Nobody likes to watch a PowerPoint presentation. Point number four, Bitrate also makes all the difference when it comes to streaming and gaming quality as well. Sometimes you'll watch streams and you'll see a bunch of pixelation or it won't look as clear as what other streams do. And that's because games like FPS games and in games that are very that are high intense on the screen, they require higher bitrate to uh, render the pixels versus casual games which you can get away with um, you know, lower bit rates and whatnot. Point number five and the final point, streaming and recording require different settings to be functional, but at the same level. And we'll talk more about that while I'm doing the run through of the settings. Now, with all that being said and discussed, let's take a direct look at the settings that I use on OBS Studio and the reasons to why I use them. Now that we've made it onto the main user interface on OBS Studio, in the bottom right hand corner you should see a tab that says settings, which is obviously what you're going to want to click on to have a look at the settings of what it is that you're streaming and running on. For general, I don't believe I've ever changed anything, so we can quickly move on from there. You'll then want to go to stream, service I always have on as Twitch, server you'll want to keep as auto, so if anything ever happens to a particular Twitch server in a location, so when you click this down obviously it shows you all your locations and whatnot. You could change it to London, you know, which could be my closest one, but I keep Keep it as um, auto that way if any servers do ever go down or that you know twitch ever have any issues it will automatically link me onto another server and it won't knock my stream out okay uh, you want to link your twitch account or whichever account it allows you to link here and then you can also have some twitch chat add-ons including better ttv and frank of az if you want to have extra emotes in your channel which i highly recommend by the way output you want to change the mode from uh, whatever the normal one is to advanced, so it also shows you um, the breakdown of all your settings as well. Obviously, I can't click into any of these at the moment because I am recording right now. But in streaming, we spoke about earlier in regards to games being CPU and GPU intense. Now, obviously, with me being predominantly a COD streamer and a COD player, once I click the encoder, I've got the H.264 here, which is the, the newest graphics card um, encoder on OBS and the one that I recommend personally to encode, you know, to stream and encode from, especially if you do play FPS games and they are CPU intensive. My rescale output is at 1664 by 936. If you're wondering why that is, when um, you watch my streams, you'll be able to watch it in 936p. So obviously the two biggest ones you've got is 1080p and then you've got 900p. This is what they class as real 900p, which is like 900 but just a little bit more clearer. And the reason that I don't stream at 1080 is because I don't think you need to to make it, um, especially for FPS games, to, to look that good. I think they look fine at 936. Just personal preference. It's up to you what you want to do with that, but that's how I do my settings on this. Rate control, you want to keep it as CBR. Bit rate, this is the big one that we spoke about before, and I personally stream at 6,000 kbps. Now, a few things to touch upon here. If you are a Twitch partner, you can stream all the way up to 8K 
Uh, I have done that before. It is pretty intense on um, your upload speed. Sometimes my upload speed can fluctuate, and I don't want people to sit there uh, watching a lag fest, which is why at the moment I stream at 6K, which still does look very good for FPS games. I would say if you're going to be an FPS player and streamer, the lowest that you want to stream at is 4,500 uh, bit rate, or else it starts to look a little bit choppy on your stream. All right. If you do stream casual games or other stuff and your internet speeds aren't that great, you could even get away with anything as low as 3,000 on the bit rate. Okay. Anything lower than 3. I think it would look blurry regardless of what game you're playing. Uh, keyframe interval, I keep that as two. My preset is set to quality. Profile, I keep as high. Look ahead turned off. Psycho visual tuning ticked on. Um, GPU as zero. And max B frames set as two. You click apply whenever you've done that. Uh, moving on to recording, which is what we spoke about previously. I'll show you guys, we're well, not speak about this too much, but what it is that I do with this as well. Uh, this is for recording for YouTube. For example, for this video, if you do like the quality of this video, you'll be able to see exactly what it is that I'm recording off of. Um, output mode, you want to change to advanced again. All right, obviously have your recording format to MP4. Choose your uh, recording path, type as standard. Uh, rescaled output, that's not ticked for me. Um, this is left as, as uh, you know, blank, nothing in there. Rate control again, CBR. Bit rate on recording, you want up to 40,000. Obviously, you're not streaming it live, so you can get away with recording to a much higher quality. Uh, keyframe interval again, two. Quality on the preset. High profile, no look ahead, cycle visual uh, on. GPU zero at max frames, two. Same as what we had on the streaming, just a different bit rate set. Okay, audio, I don't believe I've changed any of this. If I have, these are all set to 160. Bit rate for track two is 256, and the track one is 320, and then replay buffer is off. Uh, general audio settings, you're going to want to calibrate this to your um, headphones or whatever it is that you're using. So I've got my MX-50s on, which is my desktop audio that goes into my headset. And then the mic auxiliary goes into my microphone, which is the HyperX Quadcast, to make sure that that is set up and ready to go. Obviously, you can set up several other desktop audios and other mics if you're going for like two, three mic settings or whatever it is that you're trying to do. And then none of the rest of this has been touched at all. I don't remember changing any of these settings here. Uh, moving down to video. Uh, the base resolution, I've got it down to 1080p, uh, 1920 by 1080, so it's obviously what I can see when it comes to streaming and gaming. And then obviously that's, you know, the output is then scaled down to 1080p, so it's kept the same. Downscale filter, I personally recommend by Cubic, which keeps it to the 16 samples. And then common FPS values, the highest you can have is 60 on OBS uh, Studios, so keep that on 60 as well. Hotkeys, obviously, is whatever you want that to be. And then advanced, uh, I don't believe anything's really been changed here. Process priorities want to be kept as normal. Um, and obviously, you've got your stream delay and stuff here. Automatically reconnect, you're obviously going to want to keep that on. And if you want to have a delay on your stream, you can have it there. And that's all the settings that you guys should need to know for the video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you have enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on them notifications. Any comments as well really help push the video out. Anything that's constructive as well could also help support me in editing my videos and changing my videos for the future. We're pushing ever so close to that goal of 10K on YouTube, so any support would really mean the world. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.